Hello everyone, and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm Sarah, and this bonus episode today um, is all about the sweater that I'm wearing. So if you're here for our usual um, content, this is not it. I don't normally go into great detail about my finished knits, um, but I'm making an exception in this case because this was a test knit for a designer and I wanted to give a little detail since um, this is my first time test knitting uh, for anyone. So um, I have actually run my own test knit before but this was my first time participating and I want to go ahead and thank the designer Isabel Kramer um, as well as uh, her helper on this. I believe her name is Janine. Um, she goes by Nodding Violets on Ravelry and she really kind of recruited me or let me um, volunteer for this. Um, I first saw the call for testers on this through Instagram. Um, Isabel had put up uh, three designs that she was um, looking to expand her size range for and wanted more testers. Um, so thank you Isabel for you know thinking about that and for being more inclusive with your sizing. Um, your, your knitting community and your fans really appreciate that. Um, I myself am kind of on the borderline between sort of standard sizes and plus sizes, so it really depends on the cut and the fit of a garment as to whether I'm considered like a, a large or an extra large or even a 2X. Um, but I'll talk about the fit of this sweater in a second. So I ended up knitting the size for fifth size, which is kind of on that border um, between sizes. My bust is around 47 to 48 inches. Um, and this sweater is intended to be knit with several inches of positive ease. So um, after talking with um, Isabel's helper and moderator, we um, settled on this uh, size for me. But I did make some modifications for fit, so I'll walk through those in a second. Um, but I just want to say, again, um, how nice it was to do this test knit. It was really well moderated. Um, Isabel was... Uh, traveling during the test and she was still participating and answering our questions um, and like I said her moderator was right on it as well cheering us all on and helping us when we had issues um, and I would say overall the pattern was very well written as it was um, we did point out a few things that could have been a little more clear um, and I, I think there were a couple of minor stitch count issues with a couple of the sizes but in this size um, I really didn't have any problem with the instructions, um, but like I said, I did make some modifications. Um, oh, and I haven't even told you what the sweater's called. So this one is called Manu. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it's I'll put the, the name of the sweater on the screen here while I talk about it. And it was just released today, the 13th of September. So if you are watching this this evening, um, you can go on Ravelry and get the sweater right now. Um, or if you're watching it in the future, just look it up under um, Isabel Kramer's uh, pattern page. Um, and I'll also put a link directly to the sweater pattern in the um, down bar. So um, I think like a lot of designers, um, Isabel kind of started out her design career uh, designing things for her own body shape. And she and I are shaped very, very differently. So it's interesting to me to see these differences and how her patterns look on other shaped people. Um, Isabel uh, appears to be tall. Uh, I say appears to be because I haven't actually met her, but she appears to be tall. I know that she's thin. She has broad shoulders and kind of a, a lanky, sinewy uh, build. Um, so not a lot of curves. And like you can definitely see her clavicle when she poses in these photos with these kind of boat neck sweaters. Um, I, however, am sort of more average height um, I definitely have a more stocky build and rounder figure. Um, I have sh narrower shoulders and larger arms. So you would think that maybe designs for one might not fit well on the other, um, but I think overall this sweater does you know, fit me pretty well. I think it looks good. And I think um, based on looking at some of the other test knitters photos, of people of all shapes and sizes, that this sweater um, can also accommodate a lot of different body shapes. I would simply be aware of how much positive ease you like in your garment and try to knit a garment that's close to that amount of ease, whether that's positive or negative ease. Um, 
and don't necessarily follow the instruction in the pattern to pick something with five inches of positive ease because not everyone um, wants to have that much positive ease. Um, one of the other fit things about the sweater is that um, Isabel, and she seems to design a lot of her sweaters with a more open boat neck, um, so there's just a lot more, you know, showing here in the neck area, and I prefer a tighter fitting, uh, closer fitting crew neck. Um, I knitted her Humulus sweater, the one with the garland of hops on the yoke, um, last year, and I knit that for Rick, and again, I pulled the neck in a bit from her original uh, pattern because he didn't want a boat neck either. So um, that's another design that I feature that I've seen in a lot of her sweaters. This is kind of more open neck. So again, something to be aware of. Um, if that's not your style, it's pretty easy to modify. The way that I modified this sweater was I cast on 18 stitches fewer in my size um, than the pattern called for. Um, I knit the ribbing with that stitch count and then on the next two rounds, I increased those 18 stitches gradually until I got to the correct stitch count for the cast on recommended. And then started the back of neck short, short row shaping. So there's really just two um, extra rounds between the ribbing and where the color work starts um, to help pull that neck in. And I think that did a good job. And again, I think this kind of a crew neck um, would um, you know, maybe suit more people. And I also think this kind of adaptation of 18 inches fewer would work for a bunch of sizes, not just the size that I knit. But I think maybe if you're anywhere between like the size three and the size seven, um, you could get away with that same 18 stitch difference and get this kind of closer fitting neck. Um, let's see, what else for fit? Oh, the arms. So um, this was one that Isabel actually helped me with a little bit. What I explained to her was in the size five, the schematic I think called for a 15 inch circumference at the bicep, right here at the top of the arm. Um, my bicep measurement is 15 and a half inches. Um, I think that's part of my like stocky farm woman build, but I also think it's because I do a lot of physical labor and so I have pretty well developed arm muscles. And so we had to accommodate that um, because for the size five, the kind of standard arm size is 13 and a half inches. So I should have had an inch and a half positive ease, but as written, I had negative ease up here at the top of the arm. And, um, you know, it may be okay to have a tighter fitting sweater here, but if it's too tight, it's going to affect the way that the yoke lays, the way the shoulder is, the way the neckline sits, the way the bust uh, grips around um, the top part of your chest. So that's an important detail to keep in mind is that the fit in one area of the sweater can really affect the fit of the whole garment. And so when you're making adjustments, think about how that's gonna affect the rest of the fit as well. What Isabel um, suggested was that I steal a total of eight stitches from the body and put them into the two sleeves. So it was two from the front and two from the back on each sleeve um, that I took from the body stitch count and put into the sleeve. And then she had me cast on extra stitches in the underarm area to get back to the full count for the body. So for the size five, I have four extra stitches on each sleeve um, when dividing for the sleeves, and then the exact same number of stitches in the um, upper bust area that is, is written for the size five. Um, and that was a great way to do it. It didn't interfere with the color work because you actually finish knitting the color work before you divide for the sleeves. And then it, um, it did really help the fit. I now have some positive ease under my arm. You know, the, the sweater's not saggy in any way, but it's also not pulling and it's not doing anything weird up here. Um, I have another sweater that you've seen on the podcast. You've seen me wear it. I've knitted a few years ago. And it was my first color work sweater. It's an Icelandic sweater with multiple colors in the yoke and it's got a gray body. And in that one, I did not adjust the sleeves at all. And it definitely does bind here. I've noticed um, it's pulling a little bit right here where the, the arms separate. 
and it's not as comfortable to wear because if I'm sitting perfectly still, it's fine. But then if I have to reach for something, that sweater um, doesn't really accommodate the extra space I need right in here for motion. So I'm really glad I made this modification and I think it helps the sweater sit down on my body and look, just look nicer. So those were the two modifications I made, the neck um, shaping or the, the neck style and then the upper arm uh, measurement. Now the other thing I had to do to the arms to accommodate, because I had a larger circumference here and because I don't have very long arms for my body height, um, I had to make sure that I decreased more rapidly from the shoulder down to the wrist to get to the right number of stitches um, by the time I was finished with the sleeve. If I had knit uh, the original um, decrease rate, then I would have ended up with the sleeve probably out to here, which is not what I wanted. I like a kind of a bracelet length sleeve on pullovers. I find that it's less likely to get caught on things um, or bother me, but it's still warm enough that it, it looks like a full length sleeve when I have my arms down and it still covers my wrists to keep me warm in the winter time. So that was the perfect sleeve length. Um, and I will put my modifications in um, my project page on Ravelry for this sweater so that you can see exactly what I did. Um, but those were the three changes that I made. Otherwise, it's, it's really great. Um, I am a tight knitter and so I do have learned to go up a, ne a needle size for color work versus the stockinette stitch on the body. And then I go up again on the bottom color work around um, my, my lower waist and hip area, again, to give it um, a more uniform uh, tension between the color work sections and the non-color work sections. Now, this information is all on my Ravelry page, but I'll also just uh, talk about the yarn real quickly and my gauge. Um, so the gauge for this sweater is 20 stitches over four inches, and I got 21. So again, my sweater is a tiny bit smaller than a true um, full size five, but um, again, with four to five inches of positive ease, it fits me the way that I'd like. So I'm happy with that. Um, the other thing is that this uh, yarn, the main color, um, which is kind of a heathery orangey brown, it definitely has some red and some green in it, if you can see it there. Um, this is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, and the color is called um, Amber Heather. And it's a yarn that I had sitting in my stash since 2011. I originally bought it with a different contrast yarn to knit a completely different pattern. Um, that was a long time ago, and my tastes have changed, so I never ended up knitting that sweater. But I'm glad that I had this because when um, Isabel posted her kind of teaser photo for the test knit, I saw that and I really liked the color she had used, which was another kind of orangey brown. And thought, ooh, I could I could sign up for this because I have yarn like that in my stash. Um, I did have to buy my contrast color. So this again is the same yarn, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in a mink um, heather is the color name. And in total, I used just shy of 1,100 yards for this whole sweater. Um, and I did the math and I think it works out to just under $30 in, um, plus the shipping to order this exact same yarn for a size five from Knit Picks. So for a large, extra large sweater, 100% wool, I think $30 for a brand new yarn is a really great deal. Um, and no, I don't work for Knit Picks and I'm not a sponsor or advocate for them, but I am glad that there are affordable options out there um, for those of us on a budget. It's, it's really nice to be able to get a high quality, consistently spun, consistently dyed, 100% wool yarn for that amount of money. Um, so I encourage you, and they, and they come in tons and tons of colors, so I encourage you to look, look at Knit Picks, um, you know, Lion Brand yarn, they do a lot of acrylics, which I tend to stay away from, but they also do have some affordable wool yarns. Also the Brown Sheep Company, um, which is out of Nebraska and here in the U.S., and they have a bunch of affordable um, yarns as well. So those are just a few suggestions. If you want to knit this sweater and you don't want to spend a bunch of money, um, you can. I think the yarn 
that Isabel used for her test is a European one. And so you can order it online, but then you have to pay kind of hefty international shipping on that. Um, so I will again link to the information, but just to be aware that I don't think it's readily available in North America, for example, that yarn. Um, I am really pleased with this sweater. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. Um, thank you again to Isabel and to um, her helper for letting me do the test knit, for participating, and thanks to all my fellow test knitters. Um, it was really fun to get to know a couple of you a little bit and just be in community with you and see um, all the different color combinations. Um, you guys can go check out the Ravelry project pages for them now that this is all live. Um, there's a lot of people who did, you know, subtle contrast or they reversed and they did a dark design with a lighter um, background color. So there's lots of great combinations um, to uh, fuel your imagination and spark um, your interest. And if you're knitting this sweater, I would love to um, hear from you. Let me know how it's going. Um, and if you need any help with the pattern, um, do feel free to um, get in touch with the folks on Ravelry. Um, I'm sure that either Isabel or one of her helpers would be happy to answer any questions. They seem to be very much engaged um, and everything. And like I said, um, Isabel is working on re-releasing re or re-releasing a number of her patterns in larger sizes too. So if you um, maybe in the past looked at her patterns and said, oh, you know, she doesn't have my size, um, look, look again because she's re-releasing them to accommodate um, uh, more folks. So um, I hope that's helpful. Um, like I said, this was my first test knit, so I sort of knew what to d expect going into it, but it was a different experience for me. Um, but like I said, I'm really glad with my finished product. And uh, I hope you all are working on something fun for the fall, um, whether you're working for a festival sweater or you're casting on as part of the BIPOC make-along or any of the other great um, things that are going on right now. Let us know what you're working on, what you're doing for the fall. And um, we will be back on Monday per usual with a video. We're going to talk about the Garden State Sheep Breeders Festival that we were at last weekend. So stay tuned in just a couple days. We'll have a new video for you. Thanks for watching.